When life knocks you down hard, does it make sense to be blindly optimistic and manipulate yourself saying everything will work out fine? Or would you rather be telling negative and pessimistic things to yourself like, it's the end of the world, why am I the only one who has to suffer? Both are extreme examples of optimism and pessimism, but I believe there should be a balance in the middle. And that's called realist optimism, which really helped me keep on going in my life through tough times. But just before we dive into it, if you're new here, hi, my name is Joey, and this channel is all about self-development tips to change your mindset and changing your life. So if this sounds good to you, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. We all have negative thoughts. Believe it or not, we actually say 60,000 negative thoughts a day to ourselves. Feeling negative emotions is natural as a human being, but then why are there negative and positive people? What separates them is the skill on how to deal with negative emotions. Negative emotions are just a signal from the brain to protect yourself. It's like a switch to turn you into defensive mode. Positive people are aware of those emotions but can handle them in a way to not make it repeat in their mind. Let me give you an example. Everyone has tough times in life and I'm sure you had yours. When I was bullied when I was a kid or when I screwed up horrible in something in high school, those scenes would always repeat again and again in my brain. But when I started to get fed up with it and realized it's just a waste of my time and energy thinking about it because the only thing it does is makes me feel horrible, I tried to erase that memory. First it felt almost impossible because I couldn't stop thinking about it when it hijacked my mind. But when I started telling myself that it was the best I could have done at that time, I wasn't strong enough. I can't change the past. I can only change the presence. When I started healing that little boy by tapping him on the shoulder, those thoughts start losing their negative power. And whenever they popped up again, I was able to literally delete them in my head just like pressing the delete button on the PC. Again, feeling and thinking negative things is okay. The important thing is to not beat yourself up. It will keep you locked up in the past forever which will lose your energy to move forward. We all have different struggles and I know there are extremely tough ones that make you feel like dying. But having said that, struggles are temporary. When you're in the storm, it's really hard to believe this and it feels like living in hell forever. But whatever difficulty you're going through, the stressful situation can always be looked from a different perspective. Hardship could be interpreted as challenges and growth opportunities for you to become generous and strong as an empathetic person. Remember to always give yourself credit that you're doing a hell of a job facing the raging storms and obstacles and try to overcome it. Now whenever you set up a goal in life, usually things don't go as expected. I've been there, you've been there, we all have. And we start comparing with others. That person always gets the results without any effort, why don't I? You start getting jealous. But jealousy is only a sensor that makes you acknowledge that you want it, nothing more. Whenever you feel jealous of someone, that's what you desire. Don't say to yourself, I'm not good enough. Your turn will come, but only when you stop comparing with others and focusing on improving your own game. Because when you keep on comparing and trying to prove something to others, you'll get overwhelmed when you don't get the results fast enough. You'll be controlled by fears and what everyone thinks about you. You might try harder and harder but end up feeling desperate and eventually being burned out. It's important to focus on the process, not the result. We can't always control the results. And stress comes when things don't go as planned. Focus on what you can control, not what you can't. You're always on the way of becoming great. Not necessarily perfect, but definitely better. It's always good to have a goal and believe that you will achieve that goal one day. Imagining how it feels when you get there and moreover, feel that you already have what you want using the law of attraction. But I also think it makes sense to back it up with actual plans and strategies. Just like when you want to get to a certain destination, you usually think of a route on how to get there. Build the bridge to connect your dream and reality. Don't focus on all the problems you have either. Focus on solutions and think of how creative you can be. Believing that you have the ability to get what you want is so powerful. Not blindly thinking that you will get it easily without any efforts, but knowing the struggles and difficulties that are ahead on the rocky road. The determination that you can get over it step by step. Believing that what you're going after is something great. That it requires persistence and hard work. That it forces you to take actions to hunt down your dream. You might not yet have all the things to make your dream come true. We all start from zero, but you have the ability to figure out how to make that a reality. This is what realistic optimism is. It's a strong mindset to know where you are now, but at the same time, you know you can get to where you want to go. 
And when you want to turn your goal to reality, the first thing you need to work on is your habits. You need to break down your goal into habits to turn your bad habits into good ones. How do you do that? Here, I would like to introduce you the If Then Planning by Heidi Grant. There is always a trigger to do a habit. For example, in my case, after I come home from a stressful day, I need to drink a beer and watch YouTube videos. If I would like to change that to a positive habit, I would need to fill in the blanks. If I come home from a stressful day, then I drink orange juice and do 30 push-ups. Every habit starts from a cue. And once you identify what that trigger is when starting a bad habit, you can change the action that follows by setting up the if-then plan. Now, if you're still watching this video, you know that life has ups and downs. We don't always feel motivated and positive every day. Sometimes we think quite negative stuff and just don't feel like getting the job done. Well, if so, I recommend you the death writing. At first, this might sound dark, but hear me out. It's to think and write 15 minutes a day on anything regarding death for only one week. Imagine your funeral. Who will be there and what do you want to be remembered for? Think of how many years you will live on this earth and how much time you got left. Think of what you want to experience before you die. Do you want to be a millionaire? Travel around the world? Get married with the person you love and build a family? By thinking about death, the time you have left starts turning into precious gold. We only got one shot in life. When you take this really seriously, you understand there's no time wasting on negative thoughts then it makes much more sense to focus on what you want to accomplish in life, to feel happiness, joy, love, fulfillment, and excitement. If you want to learn how to find your purpose in life, the next video to watch is in the upper right corner or in the link below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell me, are you like a wolf that's realistic but optimistic hunting down your dreams? Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.